Hello, welcome back to the desk corner or welcome if you are new to my channel. Today I thought it would be fun to pull out a supply that I don't use very often at all and actually try to work on a project with it and use my channel for motivation to use this supply because otherwise it would probably just sit there collecting dust. The abandoned supply that I'm talking about are my pastel pencils. I have two sets. I have the Faber-Castell Pit Pastels and I have the Stabilo Carbothello and I have absolutely no excuse for letting them sit for so long. I do not even know if I pulled them out once in 2021 and it is already October. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump to the desk view before I change my mind about using my pastel pencils today. I thought I would show you guys the sets really quickly in case you are not familiar with pastel pencils. So these are soft pastels, they're very like chalky, they're not like oil pastels or anything like that. They're very messy and powdery. The Stabilos are really soft. You could see a lot of them have gotten so short because, not because I use them really often, because I didn't use them a ton, just because they're hard to sharpen and some of them you need to sharpen often. They end up just getting so, so short. So what I did to kind of combat this issue is I bought a second set of pastel pencils because the best way to solve any problem is to buy more art supplies. But I bought the Faber Castell Pit Pastels after I bought the Carbothellos, and these are slightly harder. So there's always a variety of hardness when you use pastels or pastel pencils, sticks or pencils really. And so I bought these, which are slightly harder, and I could use them for finer detail, keep them sharper. My favorite paper to use with pastels is Pastel Matte. It's the only paper that doesn't make me want to rip my own hair out and throw myself out the window when using pastel pencils. So I have a lot of different um, shades or colors that I could choose from for this. I'm just going to see what works best with the reference photo that I am using. Without further ado guys, let's go ahead and jump straight into the drawing. The toned paper I actually ended up going for was gray, warm gray I would say, and I decided to draw a fox. Now I was really excited for this because every once in a while I like to draw foxes. I have a couple watercolor fox paintings that I've done over the past few years and they just seem to be one of my favorite subject matter to draw, especially in this side profile view. I've actually taken to drawing animals in side profile view lately and I think it's really fun and different. So I think they just sometimes pop out of the page a little bit more because you can see the snout in different proportions like that. So since I'm using pastel pencil, I'm using totally different methods as I would with colored pencil. And you'll see me pausing a lot to sharpen the pencils because it is notoriously difficult to get your pastel pencil sharp. And I gave up on trying to get a sharp point. I would just sharpen it about halfway so that I could get fine details with an edge of the pencil but there was no way I was getting those points super sharp and every time I would try, I would have breakage. This isn't due to the quality of the pencil because these are pretty high quality pastel pencils, but I found with every pastel pencil I've ever tried, it has been difficult to sharpen them. I'd like to know what you guys consider the positives and the negatives of using pastel pencils. So for me, I feel that the strongest positive is that you can create a piece much more quickly than you would be able to if you were using something like colored pencil. And I actually have heard of a lot of people now using pan pastels to create an underlayer for their artwork and then using maybe pastel pencils or colored pencils on top depending on what they are creating and how it just speeds up the process. I find that pastel pencils are rather quick to work with when I compare them to colored pencils and therefore I was able to finish this fox within maybe four to five hours whereas if I did a colored pencil piece similar to this it would take me much longer than that to complete it. So if you're in the mood to create something but you don't want to be working on it for more than a few hours or maybe a couple hours per day and you want it to be finished after that then maybe consider pastel pencils because that is definitely a big positive. Another positive is that they're very vibrant and easy to layer in my experience, but then again, that's while using the pastel matte paper and I think it makes a big difference because without it, I have a lot of trouble trying to layer. Some of the negatives I think that I at least identified while I was doing this drawing and I've known this before, it's just been so long since I've created pastel pencil pieces that I thought I might as well 
wait to confirm my opinions on everything until after I finished this piece so I would have a better idea and a more clear picture of what I thought about them. But some of the negatives that I noticed, especially, well, the sharpening issue because you cannot really sharpen your pencil very much and if you do manage to sharpen it to a sharp point, it's not going to stay there very long and you're going to end up actually going through the pencil extremely quickly. I have seen people use colored pencil for the finer details on top after they created their initial piece with pastel pencil and I think that that might actually be something useful to do and I might consider doing it in the future. I didn't do it with this particular drawing because I wanted to keep it just within the one medium but I think in the future I will touch up and do extra details with a colored pencil just so that I'm not going through my pastel pencils and sharpening them and having them break because they do tend to crumble and break a little bit and especially when you are trying to sharpen them you have to be extra careful with them they're a bit delicate another negative is that the dust can be messy which is why I have a piece of like wax tracing paper underneath to prevent my hand from getting pastel dust on it. I mean, of course, either way, I managed to smear it all over my hand regardless and even on the paper. So I had to use a kneaded eraser to pick that up. So they are a bit more messy than some other media. However, I'm kind of used to that because I do sometimes work in graphite and charcoal. At this stage, I think the fox was really starting to come together even though I hadn't been working on it for all that long. And that's what I mean about how you can really create pieces more quickly with pastel pencil. And sometimes I'm in the mood for that and I don't feel like sitting there and working on a piece that I know is going to take me 30 to 40 hours because it just feels like you're signing up for a big project and you have to be really invested in it sometimes if that makes sense and sometimes I'd rather just be creating smaller pieces or quicker pieces over maybe a day or two and just spending a couple hours on them rather than having to spend something like 30 hours on one piece and just stay very focused on it and I tend to get bored easily too with one piece so I do prefer to work on pieces like this every once in a while to break it up and this area was extremely difficult, by the way, this area of fur where his fur or his or her fur is going in all sorts of different directions. It's very messy. There's a lot of dark shadowed areas and it was very difficult for me to do because I don't consider myself very great at drawing things like fur and hair. So it was a bit of a struggle, but since I was using pastel pencils, I think it was easier for me because I could go over light on top of dark. I would have struggled a lot trying to do a colored pencil piece that matched this reference photo. I don't think I would even attempt it now, but I know it would take me a lot longer and be a bit more difficult too. I don't know if it's because of the toned paper or if it's just the vibrancy of the pastels themselves, but I really love how much this drawing pops out of the page. And I think it is actually inspiring me to create more pastel work in the near future because it's hard to get that effect of having your picture pop out of the page sometimes, especially with watercolor, colored pencil, etc. You have to work extra hard to make sure you get the right amount of contrast. But this is one of those mediums where you don't really have to worry about that because that's something positive about it is that it's very vibrant and colorful as is. So what I want to ask you guys is if you like using pastel pencils, but also if you ever use pastel sticks, which I am just too clumsy and messy to be able to work with any type of stick, whether it be graphite, charcoal, or pastel. I wonder if any of you guys do though, and I know pan pastels are really popular, and I am thinking about getting myself a set maybe around the holidays to try out on my channel. I'm curious to know if you guys ever use them and what your experiences are and also what brands you recommend or what sets you recommend if you do have some. If you would like to see me create more pieces with pastel pencils, let me know in the comments below what subject matter you'd want me to do because I really think that this would be fun to try a variety of subject matter and compare it to how I feel working with colored pencils and just see the main 
I guess positives, negatives, differences, similarities, all of that stuff. I love comparing. You guys know I love comparing and getting into all the nitty gritty details. I'm just going to interrupt myself at this moment and say that here I am creating some finer details which I struggled with because I wasn't able to get the whiskers and some of the stray fur and hairs quite as sharp as I would want to because the pencil was just not too sharp. <clears throat> this is where I think that using colored pencils for these areas could come in handy because you'd be able to get a much finer result if you'd like to do something like whiskers or stray hairs. But besides that, I don't have too many complaints about this drawing or how it turned out and I'm overall happy with it. I'm curious to know what you guys think about it. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Check out my Patreon link down below if you're interested in seeing more real-time content from me because I just post sped up versions here. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.